This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Huh? I've begun the streaming walls have. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Streaming services continue to multiply and advance in their battle against traditional media. Yes. And I thought it would be a good time to round up the latest news. Okay. I can do I can do with that. The 500-pound gorilla of streaming, Netflix, decided to hike their monthly cost to $9.99, up a dollar, although existing customers are grandfathered in for now. I think we're still paying $7.99 I think plus we're, tax. Yeah, I think we're grandfathered of a grandfathered. <laughs> we're a great-grandfather! Exactly. I love Netflix. Absolutely. They, of course, they got to pay for House of Cards, which apparently cost $100 million for two seasons, mm-hmm. and Orange is the New Black. they got to find the money somewhere. And they've got several other yes. original shows. Yeah, not to mention getting into the movie business with Beast of No Nation and other productions. Yep. And this is, of course, all their defense against the studios who are now cutting back on Netflix deals. And not necessarily other than streaming, you know? Right. They, they just don't want their stuff streaming on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Those, you can still get DVDs. And I'm wondering if you know Netflix will have to go back to its DVD model. It's possible. Now, it's reported that Netflix is going to spend up to $5 billion next year in programming. <laughs> we have a Asis Ansari's Master of None sitcom just debuted, mm-hmm. along with the Mr. Show follow-up with Bob and David. Mm-hmm. And Jessica Jones, part of their Marvel deal, is about to premiere as well. November 20th. That's right. So a lot of stuff coming out from Netflix. And I do spend a lot of time on Netflix, but, you know, I don't watch very much of their original programming. (laughs) I tend to watch my comfort shows, so to speak. (laughs) Things that I can put on and play in the background while I'm sewing or cleaning or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, the other major player, really, and one of their major complaints against Hulu is that you're forced to watch commercials and pay for the privilege. Mm -hmm. The ads are very repetitive, because I think they have a very lazy ad department. And not to mention (laughs) that um, they're not as, a lot of times, as high a quality. They've got a different signal or something, and it it often knocks my connection out. Yeah. So they just introduced a new no commercials plan for $11.99 a month, which is $4 over the standard cost. Mm Mm-hmm. There are some caveats, especially for some ABC shows and other shows that had something in their contract say, no, you can't do this. But then you don't watch commercials during the show. It's only before and after the show. And, of course, if you're done watching the show, you can just Who stop cares? it and not watch that commercial. So so we did sign up for that, and it's absolutely, absolutely <laughs> worth it, yes. If you're, if you're watching Hulu and you're paying for it anyways, it's worth the extra four bucks a month. Yeah. Now, there are also rumors that Time Warner will buy a stake in Hulu, which is currently owned by ABC, NBC, and Fox. Mm -hmm. Time Warner recently announced that Netflix might not get all the CW content they get today, so they wouldn't get, like, full seasons of Arrow and Flash. So you'd get, like, several episodes, but not all of them. So this kind of ties into that. Uh, (laughs) Now, I wonder how that will play with say the net neutrality thing and you know time warner would they give preference then to hulu traffic well that's a good question because if there's if it's supposed to be net net neutral they wouldn't be able to but they've got lots of ways to get around that for example they could and i think they're already starting to do deals with hulu where you can just bundle it in with your time warner yeah so if this deal actually goes through This is going to have an enormous impact on a new player, CBS All Access. CBS decided to stay out of the Hulu deal, which has put them way behind. Yeah. (laughs) Their demographic skews a lot older, but they can't depend on that generation much longer. So was their thought that they didn't have people who would watch online? Yeah. Oh, okay. They they bet wrong. Yes. (laughs) So they've introduced the service last year. But it barely made a ripple in the market uh-huh. because as lots of commercials, yep. as many as you would on as on TV. Although it's, I think it's the same ad department as CBS proper. Yeah, so they have different <laughs> ads and better ads than right. than uh, Hulu did. Right. There's a six dollar price, which is almost what you're paying for regular Hulu. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
and limited content. Only a few episodes of their big hits. Right, so you can't watch like a, the whole season to date of The Big Bang Theory. Right. And I have a theory on why they do that. Okay. Because if you're like me, the only time you sign up for CBS All Access is when there's something you want to watch, and then you cancel it again. Right. So I'll sign up for it a month at a time and watch, say, all the episodes of the season that I wanted to watch. Right. <laughs> and then I'll cancel then it. And I'm done. <laughs> And wait maybe six months and sign up for it again. Right. So... And you get the first month for free. Well, you only do get that once unless you use a different email address. Right, yeah. So it's currently really a non-starter. Mm -hmm. And we actually signed up, you mentioned, we signed up for a free month after our TiVo went belly up and had to be repaired. And this is connected to an antenna only. Mm -hmm. The quality was okay, but I really couldn't justify paying for something I could get off the air. Right. Exactly. <laughs> On a regular basis. Yes. But a recent announcement could change that. Yes. And I say could. Yes, could. A new Star Trek series is coming January 2017 with the pilot on the mothership CBS, mm -hmm. then moving to the streaming site. Yes. Will I get it to watch the new track? I suppose I probably will. <laughs> But even with the rabid Trekkie fan base, $6 for that show seems shaky. So they'll need more original programming, which brings us back to Hulu and Time Warner. Mm -hmm. If that deal goes through, the only major studio without a vested interest in Hulu, Universal slash NBC slash Cable Town, Disney slash ABC, Fox slash Fox, and now Time Warner would be Paramount slash Viacom. Mm-hmm. CBS would have to depend on them entirely, the Paramount Viacom group, or fall back on minor producers. Mm -hmm. And would also mean the chance of shows like Big Bang Theory, which is owned by Time Warner, mm -hmm. getting more episodes on CBS All Access, that goes pretty much to zero. Yeah. That's never going to happen. I, but it also could be your, your point is... It gets you to go in, and but unfortunately, doesn't get you to stay. Yeah, and you get they get a month or so at a time, and you know, quite frankly, with something like the uh, Star Trek show, I'd be more inclined to probably wait and buy that on DVD. Yeah, almost. Yeah, it's it's almost worth that. It's like buying a floppy comic or the graphic novel. You right. know, wait to the end. So ABC is also doubling down on streaming with their Watch ABC app. They've introduced new original streaming content, starting with this comic, Eliza Schlesinger, who apparently did some Netflix specials, with more stuff to come. The plan is to use the streaming service as a farm team, introducing shows on the streaming app, and if they do well, move them to ABC proper. There's technically no cost to watch ABC for Watch ABC. Yes. <laughs> the Watch ABC app. app. Unless you don't have a cable or satellite service to tie it to, uh, in which case your choices are more limited, fewer episodes. Yes. Which means it's not great for cord cutters. Right. And there's also Amazon Instant Video, which a lot of people all have already paid for but don't know they have. Yes. <laughs> if you have Amazon Prime, which is currently $99 a year, you have Amazon Instant Video. They've been following a more traditional pilot season concept. They allow the public to see and rate the new shows before moving a few of them to a series. Yes, and we've watched a few of those pilots. Right. Some of them were good and some of them were bad. Yeah. Transparent became their first big hit and the first Emmy for Amazon. Yeah. Man in the High Castle just started streaming, which is Philip K. Dick's story about Nazis winning World War II. Mm -hmm. The pilot was intriguing that we saw like a year ago. Yes. And I do plan to go and watch the actual series. Mm-hmm. I was excited to see Sling TV when it was announced, and I did get a free month. It's normally around $20 a month. Because they worked out a deal with multiple cable channels, and they provide live feeds with a decent app. And then I remembered why I'm a cord cutter. <laughs> I couldn't find anything decent to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Although the channel selection was okay, and it was actually channels that I would watch, but I go like, eh. Do you know, the thing is, is that there's a lot of stuff you would watch if it was on TV and you had nothing else to, else do, to do, and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, now, there's, without it, we yes. don't get used to watching that stuff. Right. And so, we're a little bit more picky about what we do watch. Exactly. I really think that's the case. Yeah, those days are gone. <laughs> yeah. Now, there are some smaller streaming services, mm -hmm. too, and one of those is um, Acorn TV. And I did do a trial month for Acorn TV, and probably nobody's heard of this one. Mm -hmm. But it's it's British television. Right. So it's a lot of British television, 
before it gets to the U.S., either on BBC America or on PBS. So you can stream some of the really good TV if you're into British television, not like Downton Abbey, but like Inspector Lewis or Doc Martin before it comes to the U.S. And it's and it's ITV stuff, I believe. It's not. I don't think. Is there any BBC stuff in there? Because I, I assume BBC holds that very close to the I'm best. I'm pretty sure they do. And, you know, BBC is talking about having a streaming service nationwide. They are talking about so. it. Unfortunately, also a non-starter because they said, yes, we're bringing iPlayer, BBC iPlayer, to the United States as long as it's not programming that's available on BBC America. Yeah. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I also want to mention Pluto TV, kind of a collector of existing web feeds for various mostly obscure channels. It's free, and the content is available if you want to look for it elsewhere, but you'd have to find it yourself. Mm -hmm. And the website kind of gives you a TV guide-like interface. <laughs> there happens to be a 24-hour Mystery Science Theater 3000 channel, courtesy of Shop Factory, ah! which reminds me... Joel Hodgson just announced a Kickstarter to bring back MST3K. And Mark could not give them money fast. <laughs> Shut up and take my money! <laughs> <laughs> As of this recording, there are around 1.8 million of their $2 million goal. And that's like four days or something? Yeah, they're definitely going to meet their main goal. The question is whether they can hit the stretch goals to do more episodes. I the, think it, if they hit 5.5 million, they'll do an entire season. There are 12 episodes. Yeah. And right now, the, the, the main goal hits them at only three. Mm -hmm. It's going to be made available through some sort of website, although I have to assume Shout Factory is involved because Shout Factory bought the rights to MSC, yes. mm -hmm. with hopes to get one of the services we mentioned before to maybe pick it up, aka and finance, Netflix. Yeah, and, other yeah. episodes. So, I want to remind you to go to bringbackmst3k.com and push, push the, button, the button, Frank. Frank. Yes. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to new episodes of MST3K. <laughs> and in the meantime... You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>